Thanks for tuning in. This video gives you the opportunity to use a tool used in psychology to help you learn about yourself, to facilitate self-analysis, self-discovery, self-awareness. It's called the Word Association Test. It was originally used in the context of psychology by psychoanalysts. So psychoanalysis is the subfield of the broader field of psychology, which is based on the fundamental idea that there's an unconscious realm of the human mind, that you're not completely aware of all the psychological factors that influence what you think about, how you perceive the world, your emotional patterns, the choices you make, your behaviors, and although you're not aware of them, they still exert great influence over you. And the whole idea and goal with psychotherapy, therapy based on these principles, is to become conscious of what is unconscious, to shine light into the dark and reveal what factors are driving your behavior. Because once you become conscious of what is not conscious, then it doesn't affect you in the same way. Once you become conscious of what you were unconscious about, now you can actually process. So things like a painful past experience, a taboo desire, fear about the future. These are some examples of factors that might be below the threshold of your awareness which again, even though you're unaware of them, they still influence your life. And there are many techniques for helping us reveal what is in this unconscious realm. The word association test is one of them. So I recommend that you have something to write on and with as you do this test. I wanna give you the opportunity to do it and give some ideas about how to analyze it. And I'll give you this test and here's how it will go. I will read a word and then I'll pause just for a few seconds, long enough for you to write down, or if you don't have anything to write with, you can just say it out loud, whatever comes to your mind. The first thing that comes to your mind once I say the word that I say. And then at the end of the test, I'll tell you how you can analyze it. And again, it'll be best in analyzing it if you actually have the opportunity to write it down. So here we go. Car. So again, all you're doing is writing down or saying aloud the very first word that comes to your mind when you hear what I say. Fork. Dog. Ball. Blue. Child. Trouble. Book. Cop. Mother. Ground. Grass. Father. Red. Paper. Brother. Music. Drugs. Time.
sex. Future. Health. Prison. Food. Cry. Love. Alone. Bully. Connection. Short. President. Beer. Trade. Scream. Death. Okay, so if what you're looking at now is a list of words that you wrote in response to what I said, you have something to analyze here. And it may be helpful to go back and remind yourself of what words I said that you were responding to. I actually did leave the list in the description below. The way to analyze this Again, the goal is that you're looking for associations. Sometimes, some of the associations we have don't really reveal any of the sources of significant emotions. Sometimes words are just filed in the same cabinet in your mind. For example, if I said grass and you said green, or if I said school and you said bus, those are just words that fit within the same scheme or concept in your mind and it doesn't necessarily reveal anything deep and unconscious about your mind so some of the associations that you have can be explained in that way this sort of cognitive compartmentalization of certain schemes and concepts and categories but some of what you wrote down might have been revealing of associations that you have with certain phenomena that actually affect your emotions and your thoughts and your behaviors. So the two main things that you're looking for in the word association test is the amount of time it takes to respond and whether there are any unexpected types of associations. To the first one, how much time it takes to respond, typically when there is a long delay or if in any of the words that I said you didn't get a chance to write down anything before I said the next word, that would be an example of a fairly long response time. And what that might indicate is that there is a lot more unconscious processing going on and potentially even something within your psyche that is inhibiting your initial response. If there was anything that made you feel like, oh, I shouldn't say that out loud or I shouldn't write that down, then the question is, well, why not? Why is that taboo? Why don't you want to admit that you have that association? You might have even had the sense 
for example, maybe when I said mother, you kind of had this experience of like, uh, it's complicated. And so then what's behind that complication? What factors are complicating this, this response? Most likely, you're not aware of all of the factors that are complicating this response. So again, that just reveals unconscious associations and it might be worth further investigating. So that's one thing to look for is long response times. The other thing to look for, as I said, is unexpected types of associations. If, for example, when I said father, you said mother, that's not an unexpected association. If when I said brother, you said sister, again, not an unexpected association. But if when I said brother, you said scared, that's an unexpected association. I've done this word association test with many people and many of the words I did with you today, I've used them in the tests I've done with many people. And I noticed there's a couple words that tend to elicit unexpected associations. One of those is cop. And so if you can just, just picture this to really reveal what we mean when we say that this can reveal sensitivities towards certain people or situations. If you did a word association test with somebody and when I said cop, they said protection, you can be sure that that person is going to feel at ease around a police officer. But if I said cop and the person said abuse, you can be sure that that person will feel uneasy around police officers. And what can cause those associations? Well, of course, personal experience or just exposure through TV, through witnessing other people have an experience. The other one is the word alone. That's really interesting because sometimes you get positive associations with that word and sometimes you get really fearful associations with that word or kind of sad associations. Often that is actually one of the words that people will say in response to the word alone is sad or depressed. And that's just, that's quite interesting that that would be the association with the word alone. Whereas there are other people who might say a word like relief or <laughs> wish or leave me alone. That's something that reveals there might be an association here worth investigating. And what you can then do is just create a chain of associations. I say brother, you say scared, and then I'll repeat to you scared, and you say whatever comes to your mind next, which could be an image or a thought, because that's the other thing that can happen when I say these words, right? Is something not in the sort of subverbal thought form, word form, but an actual image that materializes in your mind, which could be equally revealing. And that of course is something that only you can see. We can't put a video camera into your head and see what is playing out in your imagination, but this is something that you can analyze for yourself. If I said brother, you said scared, I said scared, and then suddenly this image of your brother holding your head down in a toilet or something like that were to pop up, well, you can be sure that that experience has been affecting you unless you have completely healed from it. So this is what the word association test can reveal. Unconscious associations with certain types of experiences or phenomena. So when you're just kind of tripping the mind to produce content that reveals the nature of what is underground. And upon unearthing that, you can process it consciously, rationally, with support. And as we do that, we heal, we move forward, we let go of baggage, we become lighter, we are no longer affected by so many factors that we're not aware of, and we gain control of ourselves. So I'm well aware that it's not a trivial matter to dig into the depths of your psyche and see what your unconscious associations are and that the word association test can definitely bring up intense, 
painful associations. And so I don't do this lightly. And this is typically done in a more clinical setting, but it's also safe to do in this context. But if you do feel that you have just kind of destabilized your equilibrium a little bit, first of all, that's not necessarily a bad thing because whatever was, whatever just came up to destabilize the equilibrium was there all along and was in much subtler ways limiting and affecting you and making you anxious and sensitive to certain situations. And so what I recommend, if indeed something intense came up, is to express it, keep it in the light, seek support, whether from a professional or just somebody who's a good listener, because you are capable of self-healing. So thanks so much for watching. I'm Nick Portino. Here you are, here I am, and wherever people are, psychology is.